My youngest sister went twice through marriage in both times we did istikhara and both guys pretended uh, very religious. However, they both used to beat her up. It seems that when we do istikhara, it hurts us. Why? Uh, let me object to the last statement which you made when you said that when we do istikhara, it hurts us. Istikhara never hurts. If you really know the meaning of the words which you recite and invoke Allah with in istikhara, you would never say such thing. When you say, Oh Allah, I consult you by your infinite knowledge, by your infinite power, you know and I know not, you are able to do all things. Choose for me what is best. If you know that this choice or this option is good for me in my worldly affairs and in the hereafter, make it easy for me and facilitate it for me. And if it is the opposite, then take it away from me and divert me away from it and decide and decree for me what is good. And Nabi Wasallam said, if you do pray istikhara properly, Allah the Almighty will direct you to the right choice. Right choice does not necessarily mean that you will get what you desire, because in this case it is not istikhara. That's why with many people istikhara is ineffective. When the person's hawa, love and tendency, the person's heart has already made up his mind, has already decided, but he's doing the routine of praying the istikhara. The person has to be fair-minded, undecided, and truly let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose even if that thing you like it so much. Sometimes when a gentleman proposes to a girl and the family uh, see him having a good job, a good career, nice looking, tall, handsome, uh, driving a nice car, right away they agree. And then they say, oh, we'll pray istikhara. You already made up your mind and you agree to everything. And you book the whole invited people so the istikhara is like a routine. What will happen is that your hawa, your whim, your desire will overcome the result. And you will say that is the outcome of al-istikhara. Al-istikhara was not effective in the first place because it was not offered properly. Once you decide to do something before making the decision, you consult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-istikhara is not the only procedure which is required before marriage and before serious matters and decisions. Also, al-istishara, consulting people, investigating. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not only say, if somebody proposes to your daughter, pray istikhara and say bismillah. No, he said, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَأَمَانَتَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ Whenever somebody whom you truly trust his religious commitment and his manners, which is presented in one of the forms, uh, form of akhlaq, which is uh, amana, trustworthiness and honesty. If you really trust him and you figure out and you realize that he is, the outer part is like the inner part, he is truly religiously committed. And a man of akhlaq, then give him your daughter in marriage because he's eligible. He's fit. He's the right candidate. And as you know also, Nabi Wasallam advised the man what to do when uh, looking for a life mate for a wife. But here in the case of the sister, when you made the istikhara, uh, we need to ask you whether you really did istikhara properly or you had already made up your mind. Many cases which I, um, I observe and I examine whenever I do counseling, that the people, once the person knocks on the door and he has a good job, a good career, a good car, a good house or apartment, the decision is made. Wallahi, people tell me, he is great. He has the best akhlaq and everything. He only, one thing that he doesn't do. One thing, which is like a little thing. I say, what is it? Well, he doesn't pray. And they belittle abandoning the prayer. So they are shocked when I say, no, don't give him your daughter in marriage. Oh, Sheikh, he's going to pray. I don't care. Not before he's already praying regularly. Or a person with a beard, but he's violent. No, don't give him your daughter in marriage. Look what Al-Hassan al-Basri said. When he was asked, whom shall I give my daughter in marriage to? He said, 
marry her to somebody whom whenever he loves her, he would honor her. And in ahabbaha akramaha, wa in abghadaha lam yuhinha. And if he dislikes her, if he doesn't love her anymore, if he disagrees with her, he would not humiliate her. He would not disgrace her. So it is very important to do these two things, istikhara and istishara. And istishara entails investigation and consulting people who are aware of this person. Go to his job, go to his neighborhood, to his family members, and those who are being consulted concerning marriage. If somebody asks me, what do you think of such and such person who is the host of your program or he's working under you in, uh, in that channel? You, you may find me saying, uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, but you know, he appears with you on television, so what? I wouldn't give him my daughter in marriage if it, it was me. I'm just saying to that extent, the person has to be honest in giving the nasiha, in giving the advice. And it happened with us before. And I said, I won't give an advice. I wouldn't recommend him. Why? Because I don't know him. Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, heard a conversation between two people. When one was recommending a third to the second person whom he was talking to. He said, I trust him, he's a good, he's a good man and you can do business with him. So Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, intervened. And he spoke to the person who was vouching for the credibility of uh, a third person. He said, uh, do you know him? Do you really know him? He said, yes, 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 I know him. He said, uh, is he your neighbor? He said, no, he's not. Did you travel with him? He said, no, I didn't have a chance to travel with him. We never traveled together. Did you do business with him? He said, not that either. He said, then you don't know him. Perhaps you have seen him going to the masjid. You met him in the masjid. That is a part which every Muslim does. But whether the practical application of being religiously committed reflected on his manners and his akhlaq or not, that something has to be investigated. You say that both used to beat her up. Number one, that is entirely rejected. And Nabi Sallallahu said, وَلَا يَضْرِبُ إِلَّا لَئِيمٌ The one who would beat his wife is very slicky. This practice is condemned by the Prophet Sallallahu He never laid his hand on a woman or a child. Only on the battlefield. How could a person slab or beat his wife? Then he asked her to share bed with him by the end and have an intimate relationship with him and kiss her and so on. This is one thing pertaining your part of the story. We really don't know your sister's behavior because we don't know who's the question or the family. So it means it could be both ways. There are some women who are really, really, um, I do not necessarily mean that your sister is like that. But if you're involved in marriage counseling, you have to listen to both parties. You will be uh, amazed how the story would it change 180 from listening from this party versus this party and then having them both confronting each other. So we have to be uh, fair. Um, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah An-Nisa that if you fear breach between them then appoint an arbitrator from him, from his family, from his side and another one from her family or her side, Hakama a wise man, so that each person would have their own representatives or arbitrator in order to negotiate and share all the facts and they would have the power of deciding whether to resume the marriage and reconcile or to seize this relationship. Uh, may Allah guide us to what is best. Huda TV's social media sites are the best way to contact us from anywhere around the world. Stay connected with Huda TV's latest news and programs through Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. It's fast and easy. Stay up to date with your favorite shows and scholars today. Huda TV, a light in every home.